Okay, I'm using my specialist tools as you can see. This is a nice curved chisel. There are various tights for getting into the wood. Here I'm using it on seasoned wood. It's just the same principle really with as you would apply to green wood. In that you go with the grain to cut. And it peels off. You can see I've already cut down to my depth and that's where this joist is going to sit inside. And I will also do commensurate cut on this one so that the two are interlocking. But with a sharp chisel, it cuts like butter. Get a little bit more tricky as you get down to the bottom, but that's no problem. That's why we have different types of chisels. So I've built some structures around Britain, helped in a few. Including eco sheds, general shelters, and eventually I would build a few more structures here. Hopefully with the help of a community of people who pass by once in a while. As you can see, I use both hands because I believe that when you are learning something, and I know we are always learning, it applies balance and harmony to your structure as well as to your own mind in your learning processes and actually inflicts less damage or mistake from what you are doing. incredibly beautiful material to work with and it's such an adventure to be able to discover new woods but for my African friends I've seen it over there as well people working with wood all the time and here as well as in many other European forests are woodworkers who boot the most Incredible structures, it's not a lost art. This may well be an oak. just because of their hard quality and strength. But if you're going for outdoor structures, in terms of resistance against rot and insects, um, you could go for sweet chestnut. And I've done a few structures with sweet chestnut, which are still standing without any preservation. Coming down to my line here. There's a chamfered edge on this blade, as you can see, hopefully. And that's so that you can come in at an angle, but cut straight. So literally I can cut straight.
say sweet chestnut has a life expectancy of about 20 years and then you replace it. That's why traditionally English fencing used to be made from chestnut poles. We're just coming into a knoll. But this is something kids would love to do. You bring your kids here before I finish my structure. And at some time in the future, we'll do a lot more of this. So basically I've got down to my line, which is five centimeters deep. And I will do a commensurate cut on this one when that sits in there at five centimeters deep also so that they will be interlocking and then I will peg it I'm going to change my chisel now again we have the chamfered edge what I'm going to do here is literally finish off 